Now note that the measurement precision for the original data set is generally limited to two significant figures. So what that means in terms of the numbers that we've calculated for the gradient of each of these lines, that certainly the decimal point places after the decimal point are superfluous. So I'm going to round each of these. Um, I'm going to format the trend line label, in fact. And inside format trend line label, I'm going to choose zero decimal places for each of these values for the gradient. Um, note now that it actually gives us three significant figures for each of those gradient values and we've actually identified that our limiting precision is two significant figures. Now I'm going to summarize the results um, regarding the accuracy and precision of the test um, in a short table which we'll place um, under the other two tables. Now first of all I'm going to summarize the measurement precision for the measurements. Um, now I'm going to wrap this word across two lines, so I'm going to go to Format Cells. Inside Alignment, I can choose Wrap Text, and notice that measurement precision value uh, text is wrapped around two lines. We're next going to actually state the nominal values for the each of the resistors, which of course was 100, 220 and 470 ohms. I also want to place the text in this cell across two lines as well. So I go to Format Cells, Inside Alignment, I choose Wrap Text and OK. So just jumping ahead to get the table completed, um, I'm going to round each of the values for the slope of the line to, to the limiting precision, which is two significant figures. Note now that if we summarize the data, that the nominal value and the measured values are the same. If we wanted to investigate the accuracy of the resistors any further, then we would need to increase the precision of our measurements, possibly by employing a digital multimeter